Hello, hello, this is Chad Loop, season 4, episode 5, and we have a guest, we already had him before, hi Dean, VP of Innovation and everything else at Brandwith. Hi Dean, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. And, and also very important not to forget, this is the Digital Loops correspondent to CES. Well, it's actually our gadget geek or something, you know, so every time we need to talk about gadgets, he's the guy we call. And of course, well, Ivan just said it, you were at CES uh, just last week, uh, the big convention for ele everything consumer electronics, and we just wanted to have your thoughts about where were the big friends, or maybe was there something that you really loved or, or you thought it was mess? So how was maybe your overall impression at first? Uh, overall, okay, well, first of all, I'm not recovered from CES at all, so it's amazing you've got anything on, on screen and on, on, on mic today. Um, but, yeah, the overall impression this year was that it was like last year. Um, now, the, the kind of the big message that came out last year was VR. That was the one. I guess if you're going to pick one subject out, I guess that was the new boy in town. Um, and the thing that what that, that wasn't then delivered in the following 12 months was VR, because um, essentially there still wasn't a launch of Oculus Rift or anything else. So this time round, the kind of the headline, I guess, was that. Rift was actually available for pre-order during CES, so that was the headline. But uh, essentially, although you know VR was there, it wasn't. You know, the, there was HTC were kind of tucked away still, and Sony didn't announce anything for PlayStation VR. So it was, it was again, it was a little bit of a letdown because they were all so much closer to a finished unit, but no one really released anything. Um, so you know, apart from that, then there was everything was connected. So that you know that in itself is yeah that's great the, the world's got to be connected but it's not a headline because as soon as you start to lump everything in under the connected headline then suddenly it's it's a little bit like white noise so we got amazing things like fridges that we kind of you know <laughs> Samsung they were thoroughly mocked on the internet as soon as they said there was an eight thousand dollar connected fridge with a massive twenty one inch screen in the door so I immediately photoshopped an image together of the Walking Dead special edition um, Samsung fridge where you had a, a, you had a zombie face pressed against the digital screen um, the whole idea was to keep him fed um, lots of people seem to retweet that all over the place and I met someone from Samsung who was actually quite amused because they said as long as someone was talking about the product they actually don't care um, <laughs> but you know everything else was connected from cars in particular I would get Cars were a big thing this year, and obviously automation. The fact that self-driving is going to be big, but it, you know it's not here yet. Tesla are having a go; they're all having a go, but we're we're still away from pressing a button and, and it will drive you to work. But um, again, that that now starts to fall under the connected banner. Um, so whereas it would have been independent, we'd have talked about you know autonomous cars. Actually, it just becomes connected again. Um, drones were also kind of hanging around. They've Again, it doesn't feel fresh to us because drones have been around for a while now. Um, although there was an interesting one from Parrot, which was a fixed wing drone, which was that's amazing. How, how does that work? Uh, you can't. Well, if if I had it, I'd throw it up in the air and would crash it within minutes. Uh, <laughs> it looks fabulous, though. It looks like a proper drone, whereas you know all the others have got the little propellers, and they are what you'd expect to buy if you wanted to fly it around your house. This looks like a proper stealth drone. You know, it's a step away from weaponized, actually not just spying and filming people, but actually kind of attacking people, which is quite exciting. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and for the rest of the show, the, <laughs> there were two other highlights for me. One is I, I, I discovered a, a, guy, a French company that were producing a personal airbag. Uh, now, they've, they've been doing this for a few years now, and it's kind of been for skiers. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Because it was like, yeah, for me it was like a skiers, and especially if you're, you know, thrown into an avalanche, you can actually survive it or something. But do you mean that would be for someone like you, Dean, on the street? Yes, certainly for me. <laughs> I, I would wear anyway, and I would, I would take every opportunity to fall over just so I could activate my airbag. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's great. And again, I took a little vine clip of that, and it seems to have been rebroadcast by every press agency in the world because it was interesting <laughs> for six seconds um, and then uh, finally something else that really caught my eye was some light up shoes amazing stuff and they'd been on Indiegogo a little while ago sometime last year they were funded 
but they're actually they they the soul lights up all around the edge and it's you've got an app that controls it so you can specify what the colors are or it will react to music that you're playing with it or movement fantastic all of us on stage doing the conference circuit I, i'm determined to be the first one on stage with these i've pre-ordered they're going to be mine um but again that just falls under the wearable technology banner so again the same as connected um, wearable tech was big again this year, but it's kind of it's kind of the same thing again. And and I think a reason for all of this is because Apple aren't doing what they used to do. So CES and all of these big trade shows used to be about what Apple was going to do. So last year was the last the last kind of momentous launch that Apple did. So last CES it was pre Apple Watch Apple Watch yeah, so, correct, yeah. so Apple obviously wasn't there but everyone was displaying a smartwatch of some shape or form and everyone was actually just talking about what's the Apple Watch going to be like this year no one had anything to talk about because no one's even speculating other than a car what Apple's doing next and the car is so far away that oh, yeah, it's not yeah. really a, it's not really a headline um, so you think about you know 5 years ago everyone wanted a tablet um, and they were all going, oh, we've got a tablet. And everyone's going, yeah, yeah, but what's what's Apple going to do? So there's, we're, we're lacking that kind of thing. So uh, I think that was the bit that was maybe missing this year. Well, wow. Well, uh, uh, Ivan, uh, before I go on rambling. I just wanted to say it's funny what uh, uh, Jeremiah Oyan, our friend and, and, and former guest of the show, he just uh, posted on Facebook uh, what's really happening is that the auto industry is building tech and the tech industry is building cars. So it's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting the times that we're seeing that this is happening and, 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 and interesting to see that, that, that approach that you mentioned that everybody's waiting to see what Apple is going to do and the moment that Apple does nothing, then everybody's like, uh, <laughs> Drone, <laughs> like. <laughs> so, are, are you telling me no one came up with a pen or pencil, or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> well, to rival Apple's pencil, I, I, I still love the fact that uh, Microsoft said that um, it's great that Apple brought out a pencil, but it hasn't even got a rubber on the end. Um, and it's true that it, it's so simple that it only <laughs> they should have called it a pen because it, it, it's even you know Microsoft with Surface have got one that you can turn around and roll out your mistakes on screen. But uh, I mean, it's right, Ivan. What you say, it, it, you know, the 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 auto and tech industries are closer now than they ever have been. And and CES used to be about tech and gadgets and whatever else and TVs, god it was so many TVs this year that people don't need um, all those curved TVs we've now got in the house after they were all launched last year, like the 3D TVs we all got um, but but you know you think the auto industry you know, they would have been there in some shape or form just to show off some wild and crazy concept but those wild and crazy concepts are really the things that are at the top of the tree so there was a company launched this year Faraday Future who oh my god the, the Batmobile yeah, yeah. it was the Batmobile build. Um, so this car, you know, it's stunning. I mean, it's not going to appear like that in its final thing, but it was a great headline grabber, um, essentially for a startup company that's going to produce modular um, framework for, you know, tiniest city cars up to massive SUVs. Um, and then the headlines were all about, well, Tesla must be worried. Well, of course, Elon Musk has already said, you know, that every bit that focuses on electric vehicles is great. That's brilliant for the industry. It's not about, comp you know, Henry Ford didn't turn around and suddenly say, oh crap, someone else has invented a car. Um, it's about building on, you know, the awareness of, of an industry. So, yeah, I mean, it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff and it's great to see them kind of coming from the ground up. Well, I mean, I, I mean uh, I'll come back to that, but uh, the apparently the, the the all these cars are using basically the same technology for batteries, and a lot of it is actually coming for Tesla. So basically, because that's the big thing is uh, you can do whatever you can do a Batmobile, you can do an ugly Chevy Bolt. I'm sorry, uh, guys, but the Bolt I don't find it very fancy. But at the end of the day, the technology is having very cheap batteries or having very long-lasting batteries. The rest is, you, it's a car. I mean, it's great to have all the connected things. There's been so many connected dashboards I've seen online to the point that someone called, I think, CS the car electronic show because there were so many cars. <laughs> so, and, but you are, you, are a, you are a petrol head. You love your cars. You love... So was there, I mean, for instance, if uh, the Batmobile, so Faraday Future, were, were, were to release that one, would you buy it if you had the money? Of course, it would give it to you. 
yeah, yeah, actually, it's something it, completely crazy that it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, it's a thousand horsepower, so you know, to a petrol head, you know, no matter what it's driven by, that immediately sounds enticing. But, but I mean, one of the most impressive brands there, again, same as last year, was BMW. Um, you know, not only did they own the social space, and they did a brilliant job. As soon as I tweeted, which I kind of knew what I was doing, because last year I tweeted, and they, they, um, and I'd said kind of. BMW owned it because they'd done a brilliant takeover the side of a building and um, they said we'll come and pick you up and you can drive around in an, in an i8 brilliant nice. uh, you know I think they probably do select some of the pro bars and not everyone gets a gets the treatment but it, that was brilliant and um, then this year I kind of played my card again and knew that they were there but said you know who's you know the, the Ford GT was the official car of CES so I kind of said well what are you doing to compete with that then this year? And so, so they said, well, we'll come and pick you up in a new 7 Series. So my, my drive from the hotel to CES, which is kind of 45 minutes in traffic, was in the back of a fully equipped 7 Series, which was great. But, you know, that in itself, full of gadgets, beautiful luxury car, but not going to set the world on fire. But once they got us there, the i8 Spider was there, and that's stunning. Wow. And you know, in matte orange and black and silver and blue and all of you know all of this on the outside. And I've I've had some great petrol head conversations with kind of big Audi fans who kind of really don't like the i8 because they think it's too over the top. There's too much going on there. And you know, I I like Audi. I appreciate it, but they're all the same car in different sizes. Whereas BMW have done a great job of appealing to someone like me who just loves something that you know makes a bit of a statement. But the yeah, i8 Spider looked fabulous, it, and it was all about the tech. Um, so they had you know completely on brand and on message for the type of show. But it means that people like Tesla, people like Faraday Futures, they are making all the other big auto manufacturers up their game, and that there's there's nothing bad in that at all. Now, the question that everybody wants to know is, is there a chance that you're going to move from being a petrol head into becoming an electric head? <laughs> yeah, I, I, there is a, there's a distinct possibility of that. So, yes, the Chevy Bolts of the world aren't going to do it for me, um, but something with a bit of speed and when the infrastructure is finally there. So, something again, like the i8 that's a hybrid, still works for us with all of our range anxiety and the fact that you think, oh, crap, I'm not quite going to make it to where I'm supposed to get, or if I get there, I may not get back again. Um, so there's there's a, there's still that middle ground or the uncomfortable middle ground where we we haven't quite got the infrastructure there yet. Um, but Tesla have done a great job in in range. You look at something like that that does mental mode and it, all the other ridiculous super fast speeds that it will do, but it will still do 300 miles on a charge. Then you know that's that's bringing this kind of stuff much much closer. And also, they're lowering the price by offering a more mid-range car in the future. Like that's a play by Chevy with the Chevy Bolt as well. I think thirty thousand dollars is like okay. You know, you start at the top because that's where technology leads you first. But then you have to find a car that you know everybody can buy. Basically, not everybody can spend the amount of money for the big fat Tesla, right? Yeah, I mean, that, I mean that's true. But I mean, the thing is, people like Porsche are, are entering the market with um, you know the. They've, they've got the phenomenal Mission One. It's it's a Mission E rather. It's a it looks every bit the the Porsche of the future, and it will do the kind of same kind of speeds speeds and the same kind of range as a Tesla for twice the money. But actually, they'll make you know they'll sell all of those as fast as they can make them simply yeah, because brand, anyone yeah. that buys a Tesla is buying it because they haven't got a lot else to choose from. Yeah. Um, so actually, they they would quite happily spend twice the amount of money. Um, so yeah, the, the the smaller cars for the you know the bigger market, they will need to be there. But however, people are, you know, BMW are selling. There's a greater demand for the i8 than there is for the i3, which is again the oh. kind of that thirty thousand mark. But simply because whoever's got thirty grand to spend is a bit more choosy about what they want, so they think, well, actually, I can get a. A, a bigger saloon sized car for that money whereas if you're spending 140 grand on the, on an i8 well, you've got half a dozen other cars anyway well, uh, 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 I, well I guess for people I guess for people with that kind of problem about like okay I have so much money that I need to <laughs> wonder what to <laughs> get that maybe they can they can look into another product that was launched at, at CES the the eHang drone taxi right <laughs> yes <laughs> did, did, you, did you get the opportunity to see that over there live? Because we I, we read it; it was everywhere. When, when yeah, it yeah, it was everywhere. Although not everywhere, unfortunately. The, I mean, that would have been the the ultimate marketing, wouldn't it? It's like BMW saying, "We'll get you there in a seven series." They should have got people there in a drone. 
Uh, that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, but I think that this is interesting. I mean, right now that, that drone has 10 miles on a single charge. So in a way, when we're talking about range. That's something that is not... Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to, you know, go over there and your location is your 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 des your final destination is not 10, but but 12 miles, and then you have to start to worry about how to get down safely. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it just it just jumps from the sky or something, right? It'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but 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 interesting to see. Do you think that this is something that you know is starting to open the doors that cars aren't the only uh, autonomous vehicles in in the in the in the future? Uh, that do you think that this is something that maybe not next year, maybe not in two years, but who knows? Maybe in ten years, uh, you know, getting a drone will be as 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 normal as getting an Uber. I hope so. I mean, I, you know, I I love all the films from Minority Report to Fifth Element to all of those utilizing all of the space within levels as much as uh, the you know the flat plane that we're restricted to at the moment. Um, as long as we don't all bash into each other, then of course it will be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Um, you know, the only the only thing that will scupper that lot will be all those Amazon delivery drones that are kind of constantly hitting everybody in between. But you know, that will probably hit someone when they're delivering it to your front door as you come out, inconveniently open the front door at the wrong time. Actually, uh, Airbus uh, just announced uh, because you know there's been some stories of uh, near misses at airports. So Airbus has just announced a technology that allows the plane to basically disable and take control of drones nearby to actually remove them, not shoot them down yet. Oh, but lasers! Go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to move on away from from personal vehicles because there are a few others. But I will still want to mention because it's a friend of mine. Uh, the Uber in uh, in Vegas was all the cars were connected thanks to a company called Vinly. They actually uh, provided. I think it's a pretty interesting idea. It's I think it's a hundred dollars. It's a box you put on any type of car. So your current car, any car becomes connected. Of course, that means you have uh, a Wi-Fi network within the car. But you have other stuff. All the you enhance your current car. And I think it's a, it's a smart play for those who will not. Uh, buy a new car because we we know that the rate of renewal for car is not as fast as we we think. So maybe now. Uh, Watches, because you always, you know, you love, you have 25,000 watches and smart watches and all the wearables devices. Were there, I mean, you told, you just told us that there was Apple is not, you know, nobody is expecting what the Apple Watch 2 will be, so nobody maybe cared, but were there like stuff that really struck, was there one that you would buy? Yeah, I mean, I've, um, last, this time last year I wrote um, Dawn of the Dumb Watch. Um, which was essentially my critique on what was around at the time, and I wasn't particularly complimentary. There was because it really wasn't a lot around prior to Apple Watch. Now we've had a full 12 months. Apple Watch has been out. Um, you know, we were we were working in the early days of this thing, so by the time it appeared, we were we were a little bit tired of it anyway. I mean, so that wasn't the best perspective on it. However, 12 months down the line, the rest of the competition have kind of upped their game. They're in the second version of most of those watches. Um, but there's still some crap out there, there really is. Um, I, I, I saw a bunch this time, the Fitbit was there, it was interesting from form factor, I, you know, kind of what they were offering was a similar kind of range and customization, I wouldn't buy one. Um, the most impressive one, to be honest, was from Casio. Um, oh. and I, was, I was pleasantly surprised because they had all kind of the G-Shocks and all of the usual things which are all making quite connected now and they'll display a bit of extra information. However, they had one that's, the name eludes me because it hasn't got a name, it's got some ridiculous code. Um, but it, it, it looks tough, it's, it'll go through anything, um, you can wear it, all of that fishing and hiking and stuff that I do, none of that. Um, I wear it because <laughs> it looks cool. Um, it looks different. It comes in kind of bright orange and kind of camouflage green, and and it just looks it looks rugged. But it also the on-screen graphics, although it's Android Wear, the on-screen graphics they look they look pretty cool because they're kind of interesting graphs and stats. And to anyone that glances at your wrist, it looks like you've been really active. Um, but it's, it, what it wasn't trying to do was mimic what all the others are doing. It was doing what Casio do, kind of do best already. They, they have a range of watches. People buy them because they like the watch. Um, and, you know, everyone else is now doing what everyone else does with iPads, with phones, trying to mimic Apple's range, essentially. Um, I thought they would go in their own way and they were producing something that people might actually use. Um, so, yeah, I mean, given their due, they did well there. Also, the other one was on the Sony stands. They've launched one that's a kind of an e-ink watch, 
Um, it's quite interesting. It look, it's a bit crap to be honest because it, it's not the most flexible material. It's, it's kind of it, it bends a little bit in the wrong places, but it's a bit different. So it's got it, the whole strap itself is e ink, so the the design changes all the way around. So kind of nice try, but not not a full five star on that one by any means. Uh, just, a question, just a question: which you have many of, of those watches. Which is the one you're actually using most of the time? <laughs> well, I've got it at the moment. Uh, it's a fossil analog watch. Analog. <laughs> so I, uh, I got so tired of all the others that either stopping working, breaking. Um, one of them was so bad, it, were, it, it, it just barely functioned. Eventually, the strap came undone and it fell off my wrist. I've never had that with any watch where it's, it's fallen off and I've not noticed for a while that it isn't there. Um, I mean, uh, th that, was the, that was the HP Chrono Wing, awful, awful watch. Um, there was Will I Am a year ago. It was all about his amazing um, you know, smart cuff. Um, which oh, yeah. was the most appalling user experience of almost any device ever. Um, you know, give him due, bless him, good old Will I Am. He wants to kind of innovate and for the sake of it most of the time, but he wants to do interesting stuff. This user experience was just appalling, but you know, he, give him give him a, at least one star for, for effort. Um, but yeah, all of the others on the shelf gathering dust. Um, you know, even down to Apple Watch at the moment. But um, that's because I have to pass it around to all sorts of people. Uh, we have less than two minutes, but I still want to hear. There's also a ring. I've heard there's a ring. I mean, you'll have to investigate that. Uh, the last bit is clearly uh, the price point of the Oculus was announced. I think it's $600 at 599 What do you think about the price point? Do you think people will actually for, go for it? Or do you think people, only early adopters will maybe try their hands? Yeah, early adopters will all grab one. Um, I, yeah, I think there, there was the thing I haven't seen yet, and I don't know whether I've just been a bit slack in in finding it. Is what the big headline stats, you know, not necessarily numbers, but I didn't see anything from Oculus going, "Wow, we we blitzed it." it you know, it doesn't need to be saying we we had millions of pre-orders, but it, I hadn't really seen an indication from them as to you know where that went. Um, I assume. Most people that are already involved in the business will have grabbed another headset. Um, anyone that's been hanging on, I think there will still be a delay for people adopting until they really know exactly what it means. And it's amazing to think, you know, we're 24 months into a massive beta testing period, essentially, where people still aren't quite there with VR because they haven't all tried it yet. Ivan, last question or not? Uh, no, I just just wanted to add one thing that uh, wanted to recommend a, a very interesting article that was uh, that appeared in the New York Times uh, entitled "On Display at CES: Tech Ideas in Their Awkward Adolescence," and basically uh, it's a it's a review of how uh, there are plenty of uh, great technologies that were uh, presented in, in at, at at the conference, but uh, many of them are as as the article says. Uh, early clumsy versions of tomorrow's tech. So this is something that I guess it's important to understand that uh, yes, it's incredible, yes, it's exciting, but very often what we are seeing the, here is, as you mentioned before, this 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 uh, um, device from Sony that you know it was there, but it, it was not there yet. So probably next year, in a couple of years, this is something that is going to be uh, uh, more more mainstream. But uh, we need to understand that this is you know. It's slowly moving forward. And alternatively, they all explode because, for instance, the overboards are not getting fire now, so don't get an overboard, guys. They all bad future technology. Plus, they don't actually fly. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Dean, because we're actually really running out of time. Uh, the last bit of news to make uh, really that makes really Ivan happy is that Netflix is now available in 180 countries. That means he finally can watch Netflix. Thank you, Dean. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks, guys.